This one is about this little tube right here. Now you can see it comes off of the pressure switch. This is a two-stage furnace, so it has two pressure switches. Comes off of one side of the diaphragm of the pressure switch, tees over to the same side of the diaphragm of the other pressure switch, comes up here, goes to the gas valve here, and again is teed off and goes right here to the combustion chamber. Now the combustion chamber is sealed on this thing and it draws outside air for combustion. What does that tube do? Why do we even have it there? Well, it's a reference tube. I've got a gas valve here with a regulator in it. It's actually got two regulators. The regulator needs to be at a pressure. The outside pressure around the regulator should be at the same pressure as the burners are. And the burners are inside here. Okay, because this takes outside air for combustion, this is going to be at a lower pressure than what the gas valve is. Normally this thing would have a, a little bitty bleeder somewhere that would bleed to the atmosphere around it. In this case it can't do it because it can't be in the same pressure area as here. So what we do is we reference. There's a negative pressure here. It references into the gas valve here. And of course it also goes down to the pressure switches to shut off the pressure switch, which means shut off the burner, if there was a blockage in the combustion air inlet. So it serves two purposes. One, it references the gas valve to the same pressure area as the burners and it provides protection in case there is a blockage in the combustion air. So let's watch and see what happens when I actually remove this tubing while the machine's on. Now, note I put a uh, manometer on this pressure tap which communicates right here with the manifold and I'm going to look at that pressure I'm going to fire this thing up, get it into second stage. I should be running about three and a half inches water column on second stage with this running. Then I'm going to remove this referencing tube. Uh, the burner will stay running. And let's see if it changes anything. Okay, I have the inducer on. You can see there actually is a negative pressure. Uh, showing. That's communicating from this uh, combustion chamber up here to the manifold, so it's actually showing a negative pressure. Now this is going to light and go into first stage. We're going to watch it in second stage. Now, we're showing about three and a half inches of water column on our gauge. We're in high fire, so now I'm going to disconnect this too. Okay, you can see we've gone up over 10 inches of water column. So what difference would that make? That would increase the manifold pressure, the effective manifold pressure, and the furnace would be firing at a higher rate. So yes, that does make a difference. Uh, if you get a vacuum in there that is higher than what you set it at when it was first started, when the furnace was first installed, if you change the combustion air piping, you're going to have to reset the manifold pressure on the furnace. This should be checked anytime you service it anyway. But yeah, it's in fact it's higher yet now than it was.
So, a little bit of a problem there. You want to make sure that tubing is hooked up and that you do not change the combustion air inlet after it's installed without changing the manifold pressure. That's it on this one.